Bueno, y allá en Chicago, la agencia antidrogas estadounidense ha detectado la violencia, la violencia causado por carteles mexicanos va en aumento. Allá en los Estados Unidos, hasta Illinois, viajó nuestro compañero Víctor Hugo Michel y esto fue lo que se encontró. Well, this evening, while Chicago police were investigating the shooting... Well, quite frankly, we're seeing much more organization on the part of the cartels. Uh, the way that they move their drugs and money, to a certain extent their weapons. Uh, the way that they maintain control over their organizations here has much turned much more violent. If you look at the homicide rate and some of the shootings uh, Chicago's experienced in the last several years, not all of them are, are clearly cartel related, but I'd say about 80% of them are drug related. Está a 2.000 kilómetros de la frontera y más cerca de Canadá que de México. Pero hoy Chicago es un nuevo campo de batalla en la guerra del narco. Con la tasa de homicidios disparada hasta en un 60% en los últimos tres meses, la DEA advierte que la ciudad de los vientos enfrenta un pico de violencia directamente vinculado con el tráfico de drogas. Como ninguna otra ciudad de Estados Unidos, los principales cárteles mexicanos se han esforzado en pasar inadvertidos. There are some neighborhoods in the city that remind me of Juarez, uh, when Juarez was calmer. Um, you wouldn't know, for, the, for instance, that you're in the United States. Well, those are the exact hard-working neighborhoods that we find many times through our investigations we end up in, knocking the door down on a house, finding out it's a stash house for drugs, money, or guns. And it is there for the sole reason to support cartel operations. So that in itself is a really strong indicator of really how entrenched they are in the city. La Corte Federal de Chicago concentra los juicios más importantes en todo el sistema judicial estadounidense contra capos mexicanos de alto nivel, como Joaquín El Chapo Guzmán, Ismael El Mayo Zambada, Jesús Vicente Zambada, Alfredo Guzmán Salazar y hasta Sandra Beltrán Ávila. Todos ellos tienen orden de extradición para ser presentados directamente en Illinois. Pero la penetración mexicana de los cárteles en Chicago ha tomado formas más sutiles. Desde 2008, el gobierno estadounidense ha decomisado una veintena de propiedades del cártel de Sinaloa por toda la ciudad y sus suburbios. También están incluidos algunos de los barrios más exclusivos de ese país, como Hinsdale. That the, the Mexican traffickers learned from the early Colombians. Uh, the Colombians did the same thing here in Chicago in the 80s. They would come into a town, go into a neighborhood, assimilate into the neighborhood, not be a problem, keep a low profile, and they were there for one thing is obviously to facilitate the movement of drugs. Esta aldea, repleta de mansiones que cuestan hasta 10 millones de dólares, forma parte del caso que sigue la DEA en contra de Joaquín el Chapo Guzmán. Aquí, en el número 421 de la calle Bridgewood, se llegó a descubrir una casa de seguridad en noviembre de 2008. La orden de cateo se originó en la corte, que desde ese entonces espera procesar a Guzmán Doaera. What is it like living on this street? Is it nice living on the street? Everybody yes. knows everybody. Everybody knows everybody. You know, when the market started to go down, uh, homes came up for rent because either kids couldn't, when the people died over there, um, their kids, you know, they're trying to sell it, you know, because they had their own homes. And so instead of it going right away, it wasn't. The market was crashing. So they rented it out. Now, I didn't know who they rented it to. I don't think anybody on the street did know because I didn't know it was the cartel. No, never, never. And... You know, they could have talked to me and I wouldn't have known. I just would not have known. You know, I'm a pretty easy person to talk to, but 
you know, it's kind of scary. Then you start worrying about your children, your grandchildren, all the things that go on. Yeah. Es una estampa perfecta de la América suburbana, blanca, próspera y bastante segura. Pero cuando este mundo de calles cuidadas y de vecinos que se conocen los unos a los otros despertó, se dio cuenta de que el narco mexicano ya estaba ahí. Con imágenes de Vicente González para Milenio Noticias desde Hinsdale, Illinois, Víctor Hugo Michel.